What is up, YouTube, and welcome to episode 47 of Chaos Daily. Let's get into it. I've been posting pictures on Twitter about the Double Trust and what I've put the the parts, and they're looking fantastic. I've got them here. This is the wing root. This this came out incredible. Like I'm I'm blown away. Um, I have noticed a couple things I would like to do differently. Um, the parts themselves are. A total success okay i if it was gonna be failure i wouldn't have gotten as far as i have with these um they've turned out exactly as designed the things i'm not happy with are the design aspect not the print side of things the printing is working flawlessly i, I couldn't be happy with the printing the the things i don't like about the design and it's things that i didn't know when i designed it that i know now are, are things to do with the um part removal the washing and curing stage and um, basically just handling the parts when they're removed from the printer at the moment my exposure times are higher than they should be and uh, now this is for a reason when you expose each layer lcd creates a basically a mask that light is allowed to transfer you guys know how resin printers work if you don't there's plenty of videos explaining it now the thing is is when you're printing things with very thin walls or very narrow parts you're only allowing light to pass through a very tiny little hole or a very tiny slit. And we all know how light behaves when it passes through a slit. It does weird things. So in order to get an, an adequate exposure on that area that's being exposed in that narrow line or that tiny hole or that anything that doesn't allow much of the light from the LED array below to pass through. And remember, these LEDs don't shine light up perfectly straight. They have angles of exposure. And this array of light overlaps and creates an overlapping light field that has to pass through this mask. And if you've got narrow lines, then you're only getting light coming in from all these angles, but from only a certain set of this array, which means your actual light passing through the mask is much lower than the light output of the array. Um, it's, I'll, I'll have to draw a picture at some stage. I'll do a video on this explaining my theory behind this and why I have to raise the exposure time, but so far it's working and it makes total sense and my <laughs> hypothesis on it has been verified by the results. I used the original exposure time settings that come with Cheaterbox for the Phenom and the results were floppy a little too floppy the the parts came out a little underexposed so i've raised the exposure settings and parts where there's more exposure surface where things are thicker and um, the parts come out much stiffer much harder definitely overexposed the parts where it's thin walled they come out just right at some point i hope a slicing software comes out where it has adaptive exposure rates for area so that if you have a layer and there are areas where you have big open areas that need exposure it exposes them for the correct amount of time and parts where you've got thin walls or dots it leaves them on a little bit longer and exposes them on that layer for a bit longer than the large areas that would be really cool i want i will have a chat with the lychee devs because they've been very amenable to making changes to lychee for me um i asked them about the wall thickness on their hollow tool and why it was capped at one millimeter and i said could you at least go to 0.5 because some of the stuff i want to do is at 0.5 and it's like the the smallest anyone would really want to go um and so yeah they've made that change and that should be coming out in the next update soon so i will have a chat with them and see what they think about dynamic exposure times yeah because that is something that should definitely be for resin printing anyways so let's get back on track when the part is exposed and it's done and look take it out and it's still attached to its support material it's held in place it's constrained now i want to remove that support material before i cure it because after i cure it the edges and stuff become a lot more hard become more brittle and when i remove the support material stuff like this can happen where you have this crack now uh, this happened because this was over cured so i had the exposure settings for this part much higher than i have for all these this is like the test phase this i printed at normal exposure settings and it came out floppy so i increased the exposure times then i printed this one at a higher exposure time it came out really stiff very hard you can see there's very little flex in this part this one came out really well but it was a little too much too much exposure then i turned it down a bit and i exposed this one and this is where i've dialed in that exposure rate but this is where i discovered something interesting about removing sport material and double checking your sport materials in the slicer because this one lychee for some ungodly reason decided to put support materials going through the part holding up this these uh, servo mounts so now i have th that's why this is all busted up that's all broken and busted up because you can see it there that that that's support material running through these fins um now i designed these parts for like pla and stuff and i did not know when i designed the parts how much flex 
this resin would have. Like this is this is incredible. Like there's. there's <laughs> I expected this to be a little bit more stiffer, a bit, you know, a little bit more brittle. I did, was not expecting this. <laughs> Let's just say that. So I have to go back and make some design changes in the next version. I'm going to print the plane out to its fullest. Whether or not it'll be able to fly in this state, I don't know. It should be able to if I can get the parts joined. That's my next point. If I can get the parts joined correctly. These these fins and stuff, whereas I expected it to be a bit more hard and brittle, um, they would have worked fine. But with this flexibility, that that is it's not acceptable. So... Yeah, there, there's a couple of things I need to change in the design that I was not expecting for the results with this resin. This resin is like, I just keep saying it, it's incredible. So the next issue is part joining. Now, everything prints, let me, let me, be, clear, let me be clear here. Everything prints dimensionally perfect. The tolerances are all perfect. I made this hole for a certain size carbon fiber tube. The carbon fiber tube fits. I made these square holes for the square carbon fiber tube. The carbon fiber tube fits. I made this hole for carbon fiber rod. The rod fit. Um, everywhere where there is a hole or a thing that I can measure, it is dimensionally accurate. The thing that is the problem, and I wonder if I can show it here, there's a little bit of a bump. You see that little wiggle there in the outside profile? Right, that is from the part removal when you're removing the part from the support material. So when you remove it from the printer and you have to remove the support material after you've done your washing stage, the Resin is still a little bit gummy, a little bit soft, bit rubbery. So when you remove the part, you end up actually stretching or squishing the resin, which changes its shape, it deforms it. Same happened with this piece here. There was a couple of spots, even though this was stiffer, there was a couple of spots around the bottom here where it's actually stretched out that diameter. So although this surface here all matches because there's these two little bumps here, that line up with the trailing edge of the sweep of the wing. You line those two up and it works perfectly, but then you can see there's this gap, right? It doesn't quite work anymore. So this is the issue I'm facing. I need to now redesign these edges and I'm gonna put a flange in here. Previously, I've said I'm gonna design this plane for both FTM and resin printing. I'm not gonna do that anymore. That was a dumb idea. Chaos, why did you think that was a good idea? That was stupid. You should not be designing planes for FDM printing if you don't have an FDM printer that's working that you can print them out on and test them. That makes no sense. Why are you doing this? So I'm going to focus on printing this for me for my resin printer, which means mostly complete redesign. Um, I'm going to keep a lot of the same elements, but I need to change a few things. For one, I need to deal with this flex. This, this, is, <laughs> this is too flexible, right? So a few ribs or flanges will make a world of difference. The other thing is also the, the lid, the hatch, um, the, the amount of flex that's in that. <laughs> yeah, no, I need, to, I need to beef the supports in that. So the trick is now going to be altering the internal structure of these, this design in such a way that I am increasing rigidity without increasing weight. Now I can do that because all that is required is a change in direction. The structure that is in here all has directional strength in one direction, uh, in mostly one direction. Uh, for instance, uh, the original design of the plane had this internal um, spiral structure, a lot more like this. Um, and then when one of my old patrons decided he wanted to print one of the planes for me and test it out, um, there were some issues with the FDM printing, printing it like this. Printer had issues printing it like this. So I changed the spiral pitch so that it was more like this. So it would print better on FDM printers, but we're not doing that anymore. So I'm gonna go change it back to this. I'm gonna try and get it at a 45. Um, so later down the track, when I do decide that, okay, it's ready, I can make slight alterations for it to work in FDM we can look at that. But at the moment, I want to get this working for me to prove that it can be done. The other thing that needs to be changed. Now, this is a little harder to check, but if I put my hands in here, do you see how those ribs splay out a bit? It's a little hard to see. All right, so I don't have much rigidity in, again, the lateral direction. Everything is longitudinally rigid. There's lots of longitudinal rigidity in this design. Very little lateral rigidity and very little squish rigidity. Is that a thing? Squish rigidity. Or, or it's got torsional rigidity. It's a tube. It's got torsional rigidity, but it doesn't have squish rigidity. <laughs> That's a thing. I'm, I'm coining it. That's a thing now. Squish rigidity. 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 Right. Anyways, so um, I'm going to keep printing these parts. The fuselage is basically done. Um, I'm going to now struggle to get these all to line up properly. They mostly fit. 
but because of that weird stretching or contracting that what happens when you're removing the parts from the support material um there's a little bit of alignment errors but i'm not a, i'm not hugely bothered by that i will i will make it work i did I did tabletop miniatures and modeling for decades, so I know my way around glue and files and sanding paper. I, I can do this, okay? So, let me just let me just make this stack of parts here. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're enough, there's enough alignment that I can loose fit and stack them all, no problem. Like, they'll all stack up. And this thing is nice and big. I, I love the size of this, the shape, everything. It's amazing. I mean, I was posting pictures like this one yesterday, me holding it out with it all taped together. Oh. I can't wait. So, that covers it for today's episode. Um, yeah. Just wanted to go over some of the things that I've noticed, the changes I want to make. I will go over this in more detail and laid out better with drawings and pictures and stuff in the Albatross video that is coming out next week. Yes, I will aim for next week for that video. Um, and we will get that going. So yeah, hopefully that was informative and helped you guys see a couple of the things that I've learned, a couple of the issues that I'm facing, things that I didn't know that I now know, like wiggle, 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 wiggle. Um, yeah. We're gonna make this work. It's, it's almost there. It's close it's it's gonna happen this is still a success this is this is by far a failure this if this is a failure this is the best failure i've ever had in my life i am so happy with this failure <laughs> but it's not this is a total success this worked so make sure you hit the like button make sure you're subscribed if you're not go check out my patreon if you can that's super helpful these projects are not cheap and uh as always i've been chaos and until next time expect the unexpected and i will see you guys later and a special thank you to all my patrons that help support the channel. If you would also like to support the channel, there's a link in the description.